Hey, what's up, guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and we have a quick tutorial this week. So if you've seen any of the new Adobe updates, you might have seen the new Photoshop splash screen, which looks kind of like this. And I thought that was pretty cool. It's by this guy, Amir Elshami. I, I'm not really sure if, if I'm saying that correctly. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. But he has this cool series called like Round Things Falling, and it's like a bunch of cool stuff. This is the one that he used. And what's really cool is that he actually has a tutorial on it. And I checked it out because I thought that was kind of interesting because I've actually done this effect in a spot before. So I thought maybe it would be the perfect tutorial to go over right now because this is kind of neat because you can animate it. So let me show you how to do it in After Effects. I'll have some links down below for a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about and show in this thing. Like icons. If you're using different versions of After Effects, uh, these icons might actually help you out to distinguish them. That was an idea started by Zach Lovan. He made a version of uh, these for Windows and I made some Mac OS versions. I'm also going to use a lot of uh, Video Copilot's new FX console plugin. That thing is freaking awesome. Pretty much makes this thing useless. The whole effects menu, useless. It's just brilliant. It even makes one of my old tutorials about effect defaults useless. So you should pause this right now and just go download that. All right, welcome back. Let's go over this thing. So basically, this is our main comp, and it holds our desert layer, which is what this is. And we're calling it tunnel because this desert layer is polar coordinatized in here. So you're gonna change this to rectipolar, set this to 100%, throw it on there, put a background in, boom, you got this. So let's go into that comp. This thing is a 2203 by 2203 comp, which is the hypotenuse of 1920 by 1080. I'll show you how that's calculated way back in tutorial two, radial delay. All right, so what we're gonna do is bring these guys in and I just use transform fit to comp width because these are not actually that scale, about like that. If I had migrated everything over yet, I'd use Zach's explode shape layers script, but uh, I haven't done that yet. So we're gonna just turn this into a vector layer the old fashioned way. Get rid of this guy, cause we don't need him. And actually I'm gonna do that to all of them real quick. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my Gen tool, call it Gen because it's G. Okay, grab this right here, move all this down. This thing is one of those annoying boxes that Zach's plugin will get rid of. Let's do that to all of them. Same thing here real quick. So the basic thing you gotta do here is make sure that the ends of these are the same height. That's pretty much it. Anything in between can be whatever you want. So we'll unsolo that and now we can move these around. So the red one I wanna be the outermost layer. So it's gonna be on top and like that. The yellow layer will be on the inside but I'm not gonna go too far in because if, as soon as you get up into like too far up here, it starts to distort oddly. So I'm gonna move that down and on all of these guys, I'm gonna use FX console. We're gonna type in motion for motion tile and command down to do that one and motion. It's kind of nice, don't even have to move the mouse anymore. Okay, so on this one, I'm just gonna offset this a little bit. And so since this is basically moving this wherever the hell it is, it's gonna keep that rule that we need where this starts and ends at the same spot. So now if we go back to the tunnel comp, you can see we have it like this. It's crazy colors, but who cares? So what's nice about this is that now you can go in here, you can make these little comps if you want or whatever you want to do or add things to them and parent it to the motion tile or you can really make these long and actually have them actually tile, you know, without having a tile or whatever you want to do. But now we can animate this. Option click on that. Right now we're going to say X equals and then we're going to say 1407.5, which is where it's at right now, plus time times 10. Put that in brackets. And we're gonna do X comma value one. It looks like it's gonna be pretty slow. Let's make that times 100. There we go. So we can take the same thing, option click on tile center and all of these, take that out of this one. This one is 1101.5, we'll leave that. So the top one, close these down, click on this one, do the same thing, option click on the tile. Um, let's make this 1200, there. That way they're not, oops, didn't mean to zoom in there. That way they're not all the same. But they'll move at about the same rate. And actually what you can do is, so let's say this back one right here, we want that one to move the least because it's in the far distance, right? So that one's gonna be time times like 60. We'll make this one hit you a couple times. Make this one time times 80. And then that front one will move the most. It's not a lot of like parallax, but uh, we can change that. Let's bring it down to 30 here, let's make this one 50, and that other one can still be 100. Now you can see it's moving pretty good. So if you bring it into the tunnel comp, play that, now you can see how it moves. 
Say I don't like these too close together. It's pretty easy to change. We just go over here, go to the top one, let's say. I don't like this at that value. So I'm gonna turn this off real quick. Help me figure out where I want it to be. Say I want it to be like that far ahead. So this is 234, 5, whatever, who cares? Copy it into here, paste it over that. And that's pretty much it. That's how I got that effect initially. So the other thing you can figure out is that if you want these things to move up and down or whatever, at the bottom here is where the edges are. So the circle, the very point here is the very bottom. So if I move this guy all the way down to the bottom, to where only a little bit of that is showing, you'll see that it pretty much gets rid of it, except for like here and a little bit here. That very bottom pixel is pretty much only in the, in the corners of that other comp. So if we move this back up, you can see how it affects it. It's only on these edges. So there's only a certain point where it's actually gonna cover up the whole entirety of it. So what we can do too is click on this, double click on the desert. So now we have two compositions. We can drag this to the side. So now you can go over here, move your outlines up and down, let go, and then you can see how it updates in the other comp for more advanced positioning. Close this one when you're done, unlock that, go back to the right comp first, and there you go. So of course, because this is gonna distort things, you can actually see that the cactuses in here are distorted, but if you have the other window open, you can play with it until it seems to match up properly, kind of like these are. It's gonna get worse as it gets toward the outside. It's gonna get more flattened and whatever, but you can modify those layers accordingly. I believe in the original one, I actually rotated my layers and I might've scaled things, but then I could actually attach stuff to them that were undistorted. So just like everything, there are a lot of ways you can go with this, but mess around with it and have fun. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you check out the links and follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.